Welcome everyone to the Intelligence App Stage. I hope you've had a great day of vision so far. So our next session is titled, Accelerate Your Monetization Journey with Cloud Services. My name is Benga Taylor. I'm a manager of social architecture at Red Hat North America. And I have the pleasure to introduce our esteemed speakers today. Uh, well, first we have Valentina Rodriguez Sosa, she's principal technical marketing manager at Red Hat and Ed Keen, who's a student manager in Red Hat's cloud services practice. So they both have a lot of experience in helping our customers navigate the app modernization journeys. And so today they're gonna to share lessons learned, methodologies and best practices for app modernization. So uh, before we start, uh, I just have a few, uh, I just want to um, ask a, a few things for you. If you have any questions, please place them in the events uh, comment section. And if time permits, we will answer them live after the talk. And finally, all sessions and recordings will be uploaded to the Red Hat Developer YouTube and the, pres and the presentation will be made uh, later, available later. So Valentina and Ed, the floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you for the introduction, Banga, and thank you everybody for joining us on uh, Dev Nation Day. We're really excited that you're here. Uh, Valentina and I have a, a great session to, to help you accelerate your modernization and cloud services journey. Um, as Banga said, please throw comments, questions, feedback, ideas um, in the in the chat. Um, we want to make this uh, like interactive. We would love to hear from the field as well. We are our customer facing, so what we're going to go through here is based on our, our experience in the in the field. And uh, so speaking of that, Valentina, you, you want to go to the next slide? Yes. And we'll talk about. Uh, the, the challenges that our customers have with um, actually doing app modernization, right? So this is this is based off of um, boots on the ground, folks helping platform teams and developers get onto, um, onto containers and cloud and, and modernize their apps. So first one obviously is like, um, like around prioritization of clearing tech debt and doing modernization versus um, features, working on features and, and product improvements is always a real challenge. So this is where it comes like a top down, um, a top, top down approach to, to how to help teams be able to prioritize. Once they're doing the modernization, where can they go for support? It can be very disparate and disjointed and being able to like centralize support. Um, and around that support, being able to provide people with um, getting started guides and up-to-date documentation you, um, that, that is easy for them to be able to maintain and con contribute to. Um, and then and then we'll talk a little bit more in a minute about some of the organization silos that we have to, to bridge between like five or more like different organizations or silos to, to get teams onboarded onto, onto the hybrid cloud. And then Valentina, you've got some of you've seen as well. Yes, yes. Um, should I go to the next one? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So to yeah to rephrase this, what we have seen is sometimes um, developers. It's, there is a lot of silos on the organization, and what we want to do is remove those barriers in order to have all those things collaborated together. And that is starting from the beginning. So having a clear understanding of why we are doing this modernization is very important for uh, not only your organization, but also the teams that will be implementing this modernization. Um, Yes, and the next one that we will be covering later is also onboarding into containers. So how that affect the developer experience. So we will see developer experience as one of the key elements when uh, modernizing your applications. Excellent. Yeah, and we want to make this as frictionless a journey as possible for, for developers to get onto, onto the hybrid cloud. Um, and it really all starts with having a platform that's designed for meeting the needs of um, of developers, right? That's easy to use, frictionless, uh, We can where we can onboard developers and applications quickly. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more in a second about what that looks like for Red Hat's OpenShift cloud services. Um, and then on top of that, building your modernization, and this is what Valentina will talk about. Um, a big part of that is the developer experience in a loop, um, making sure that hey, it's easy for people to be able to collaborate, find other services, and feed, feed, feedback, and, and 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 work together on um, on sharing lessons learned and, and templates and patterns. Um, and then starting starting your journey with like your migration and modernization and being able to scale that. And Valentino will talk more about that um, and what it looks like to be able to sustain this and build best practice modernization best practices into um, your daily daily uh, development. If you want to go to the next slide, Valentina. 
So for us, that platform, that developer-centric platform is uh, Red Hat's OpenShift Cloud Services. So there's native products on AWS, um, uh, Red Hat OpenShift uh, service on AWS or ROSA. And then on Azure, Azure's Red Hat OpenShift or ARO. Um, so this is the foundation, right? This is a, the turnkey developer app dev, app delivery platform. Um, on top of this, as we were talking about accelerating your cloud services journey, you want to make sure you're building a cloud landing zone to be able to hit the, like, the enterprise scale. And then you're creating patterns around cloud integration. This is this is not running in a silo. We're running in AWS or running in Azure, and so we're making use of like S3 storage, um, DynamoDB, other other cloud services um, or cloud provider services that we want to be able to have developers integrate with. Um, and then, Valentina, what do you want to cover next? Yes, so that's great. So once you have your uh, simplify platform that, such as OpenShift, what you will, will start looking into is how I can start building my own modernization journey. So you will go into different stages of your modernization journey from understanding where you are and doing um, an assessment to rationalize and that is categorizing the apps and what is that you will do with each app and taking those migrations decisions. So you will go over maybe Maybe retire, retire, retain, host, replatform, and refactor depends on what your business uh, needs are and depends on the status of your application. So rehost will be uh, I want to move. It's like the list, the list, the list and shift. It's moving an application from one uh, platform to the other one with uh, probably minimal changes. The platform will. Um, it may, it may uh, require some toolkit changes to remove uh, maybe a small few tweaks for make it container ready, cloud ready. Um, and then refactor, that will, is when it will require a lot of significant toolkit changes. You may be looking at changing the whole architecture or even rewriting the whole app. So depends on what is that you want to accomplish is the migration decision that you may take. Um, after that, once you have your decision, what you want to start doing is start measuring right away with a pilot application. So the pilot is a way that you can start proving that this modernization fits your goals. And from that, you can start proving and feeding back to what we call a plan modernization plan. Um, once you have your plan set up, you can start scaling out your, your rest of your organization. And later, what you really want is that modernization to be part of your software development lifecycle. So with that, um, how this will work, um, will you will start understanding, of course, where you are. Uh, you know, you have a lot of apps, but where are they? Um, what type of apps are and should I move it or not? So customers are uh, questioning all the time, like, should I move this app? Where should I move it? What should I start? So understanding where you are versus where is that I want to be, that allows you to create your modernization plan. So you will take a criteria, so you will have a set of different apps, uh, maybe different archetypes and line of business. With that criteria, you can create a backlog. So we really recommend this to follow with agile methodologies. So in that, in that case, you can easily iterate over phases and also it allows you to see value really soon rather than later. After that, what you want is uh, start prioritizing and be able to build some sprints so you can start uh, implementing soon. But how I can do this? So at uh, first, what we want is really to start uh, having that mission um, for the company. Like we have sometimes uh, hear from customers like how I can make all everyone on my company believe on this. So everyone will be engaged, I committed to this to this project. So understanding creating a purpose that speaks to everyone on the organization that aligns to your business value is critical all, not only for commitment and motivation, but also for long term success. So understanding what is motivates uh, you to do this modernization. It could be uh, maybe saving resources, um, saving costs, security concerns, accelerating software development life cycle. It could be multiple things, but creating that mission is important. And taking that vision also as a criteria, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, um, creating that criteria to choose your apps to see value soon rather than later. Um, things like, uh, 
thinking about this archetype. So you may start thinking about, OK, I want to move these Spring Boot apps that I have, or I want to move uh, these uh, front ends that are more easy. But also understanding the line of business values that is for them, and maybe looking in and creating those stories around them. With that, I will be able to create a backlog. Don't forget to create uh, metrics as well that can measure back into your plan success. Once I have that, I can start thinking about our pilot. And that is, where is that I will start? So I will start thinking, um, first defining short-term goals and uh, thinking about risk. So probably everything is around risk in some different ways. And so this criteria could be, I want to uh, focus on large scale migration. So I want to cover different migration patterns, so maybe some backend apps, uh, gateways, microservices, or databases, um, but also reducing risks. Maybe they, I have some legacy apps that I am very concerned that I don't know how much time that will take. Understanding the business value, what is the value for me on my organization to do this migration? And also proving this migration by working on a smaller app. So um, different, you can, uh, what we recommend is really choosing different uh, different set of apps that cover different, could cover different criteria. So for example, I can choose a smaller app so I can see value uh, really soon and that app can be from a line of business. So I can show that value into the into the line of business and the, and the, the business value. So the other thing that I can do is take a, a one that is very um, to the reduced risk, one that has uh, complexity and also cover some of the migration patterns that I can do. So I can do that means a match, but how I can do this, so what I want to show you, I will switch over my topology view. Can Ed, can you see my screen? Yep, yeah, we got it. Perfect. So this is our Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. Uh, it's our four uh, managed uh, OpenShift that is running on AWS. As an administrator, you see all capabilities. And as a developer, I have here, and you can see the topology view. So we have a migration toolkit for application, which is something that you can install in a way of uh, operator. An operator is just a component that is coming from Kubernetes that encapsulates all uh, operational knowledge into just one object that is make it easy for you. So I just installed that. It went just to a few seconds. And as a developer, you will see all these components that were created by the, this operator. The only thing that I need to do is just click here and go into my application. And here I already have an application inventory and analysis. So the first thing that you can do is an assessment to understand where is that you are, you can either import uh, a file if you have, or you can create your own. So you're already creating my own, and I can click here and I can show you how that will look. But basically, are you able to zoom in just a little bit? Are you able to zoom in just a little bit here, Valentina? Yes. There you go, beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. So what you will have here is six different criteria that I will go in order to assess my application to understand the risk. I will go from applications details, dependencies, architecture, and observability. So let's review some of this with you. Uh, each area will have around six questions. So it's really quick if you know what is the current status of your application. And it will be around your application maturity and everything around it, such as DevOps practices and quality and testing. So in this case, for example, Example is asking you how the application is tested, how the application is being configured, and how security is being managed. After you have done that, what it will show you is the risk that it's found in from your application. This risk will help you understand what is the action that you may want to take. So you may want to choose whether you want to rehost or replatform. And you can estimate the effort as well, either, either small, large, or medium, as well as at defining the business criticality and the work priority. So how this will help me? It will help me to start creating that modernization journey where I can understand what is that I am, right now and what is what I want to be. So I can uh, organize these applications in terms of efforts and risk and what is my decision. This also will help me to understand what is the uh, pilot that I want to create. So imagine that I have reviewed this and I want to go over my uh, pilot decision. So I can create different tags. These tags are being already populated and are based on the technology, but I also can create a new tag that is based for a pilot project. So what I have done is I can go here and I can filter by the tag. 
And here I can set, I want to select the ones that are for my pilot. And here will display the applications that I have selected so I can keep track of whatever I am doing. Um, however, let me clean this. What if I have an application? I have here this legacy application that I don't know much about it. It has been done so many years and I don't have too much context on it. So I might want to go on detail on the source code. So what I can do is actually I can go into the analysis tab here and I can click on analyze. And this can analyze your source code, your binary. I can click on next and it will have different paths that I can choose. So I can choose a containerization approach. And in my case, I choose Quarkus as well because this application will give me better speed and performance uh, resources in, in order for have my application speed up quickly. And this is perfect for containers. Then you just can click on next and that's it. So I already have done that for you. So I will click on here. And this is my report. And here what I can see is a dashboard will have all the different things that I may need to change. So it's a good summary for me to understand what is that I am. I can go into the different issues and it will give me not only recommendations, but how are the things that I should be implementing. So in my case, for example, I have Spring Boot libraries that I should remove. And it's, it tells me what is that I need to do in order to make it Quarkus um, implemented. The other thing, it will also uh, read on my container cloud readiness. And also it's, it says, for example, here, uh, what about your applications files? How are you writing into this? Um, maybe you need to uh, request some investigation in the Spring Boot started and many things. So this is a great way for those applications that may require some refactor and you want to go deep into detail on what's going on with this. Um, the other thing that is very important is, is to start thinking about it is we have seen that customers sometimes they have the reference architecture that they want to migrate. The only thing with that that we need to be careful is when those reference architecture requires really months of source code changes, uh, you are keeping yourself to taking advantage of the platform, the container platform capabilities. So if you spend just two, three, six months changing source code, you may be holding back in order to move your application, maybe finding like a, a middle ground, right? Maybe doing some small refactors to start seeing the value of containerization sooner rather than later. And then you can plan for a different uh, refactor uh, more advanced later on. So this is will give you that advantage that you can really understand what is that you uh, are right now and what is that you want to be in terms of your modernization approach. It will give you that um, analysis of what you can say, well, this actually will take a factor, but what if I do a minimal effort? Or what if I can choose uh, updating the open JDK? So whatever it is that you choose, you can reflect everything from here, and this can be your place when you keep everything uh, stored. Uh, Ed, do you have any comments on that you like it so far? It, yeah, and, and the only thing I was going to add is um, Valentina mentioned like, like refactoring. One of the things that we like to do is um, create like a new help teams get set up with like building a new service or refactoring like a small light service where we can help them build like the the refactoring pattern and the scaffold so when they're ready to build a new service a new capability a new feature and they want to build it as a new microservice they've got all the scaffold to hit the ground running yes 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 exactly okay so i will continue with uh the slides um yes so let me go back to this one Excellent. Hey, I'll, I'll pick up from here, Valentina. So um, it all starts with getting teams, developers and teams onto the platform. And this is where we've got like our, our, our OpenShift onboarding, getting a new project or a namespace created, ensuring that the teams get access to it, having um, the integrations to like the relevant tools and like enterprise tools that um, you might be using, right? HashiCorp Vault is a, a pretty, um, pretty very, very common one. Um, and then a lot of this is... Um, 
involves can, can involve multiple teams and multiple uh, multiple approvals. So what we've got here is just like examples of where we've done this at a couple of um, different customers, and it's taken 20 days and we're involved working with like multiple different teams just to get like a new namespace and access to the namespace and be able to start um, containerizing applications. And if you go to the next uh, the next slide, Valentina. Once you've got access to the namespace, the next step is getting your applications on board. And this is where there's things that you can start putting in place around um, having uh, playbooks, um, sample code change, or go going through your code changes, building your container. And if you um, keep clicking on through, Valentin, we should see the rest. Here we go, getting your application onboarded into like your CI, CD and your testing, um, uh, ensuring that you've got those integrations in place. And the things that, the, the, as far as like what, what we put in place and help customers with and we recommend customers have are like a community of practice so people can go to if they have challenges they can post solutions when they've solved some of the hard problems themselves we work with like a um uh, a multi-factored um, like an adoption core team or enabling team to help developer teams get onboarded quickly and, and help teach them like the best best practices when they're doing this for the first time and then valentina went through some of the the tooling and automation to help kind of speed up the journey here too yeah, maybe I will do the recap later. So let me show you about the developer experience. Of course, at Red Hat, we do have so many products. Uh, we meet developers where, wherever they are. Um, but one of the things I want to show you is this beautiful, I really love this one. Um, let me go into my uh, demo. So uh, what I have here is imagine that you are you you as a developer needs needs to start building applications, right? And you don't know where to start. Right. So what after you have done your factor if this needed you can come back here and add your project so you can come back here or you can come into this view uh, this view what will provide you is a really nice way to uh, pull your application into the cluster and run it as a container image uh, as easily as it is so if you already have your container image you can embed it if you have a home repository or any uh, any service you may already have uh, a yaml file or a jar file we take it uh, so in this in this case, I will just show you how it will work with a sample application. Just taking your source code, uh, with that, we can create um, everything. So you can create different types of deployments. I have a serverless um, operator as well already set up, so it can be converted into a serverless. I have my OpenShift or pipelines installed, so this will be converted into a pipelines automatically, automatically, and also it will create a route and everything for you. So I already did this. I will go strictly into my pipeline, and as you can see here, I have my pipeline running and succeeded. So I did this just with a click of a button. I didn't need to understand anything uh, in detail, like how to create a YAML file, how this will work internally. Just with a click of a button, I have CICD. I have my container image created and running on a cluster, which is fantastic. But also, if I am interested, you know, and have these YAML files or uh, make, make some changes, I can go directly to this, which is fantastic. So everything through my topology view. Um, the other thing I want to show you, I know we have a couple of minutes. Uh, what if I want to connect with a cloud services, right? So I wanted to talk about that. So here what I have is a set of microservices already connected and running on my cluster. I have a beautiful application that is all about fighting superheroes. And this application is connecting to my Atlas database that is on the cloud. So I have here my application. And what I want to show you is that all the, my Atlas resources that is running on a shared cluster on AWS is managed through my OpenShift cluster. So as a developer, I do have the availability to go here and create and organize my database. So I can create a project to have all my components managed to my database. I can choose whatever the type of deployment that I want to create um, from serverless to multi-cloud to uh, multi-region. In this case, I choose the, if you want to try it, I choose the M0, which is just uh, free cost, just for learning purposes, running on AWS in East region. And I just need to create my user that will be the one connected into my application. So with that, I will just give access to my application. But how this will work, let me show you in a second. So I have my deployment file, which is the file that is describing how my application will run in Kubernetes, in this case, in OpenShift. And the only thing I needed is to provide my 
Quarkus environment variable that will be specifying how my application connects to a connection stream. So this is given by a secret that is magically auto-generated by the operator. Um, and that's it. That's the only thing I needed to do. So I will show you quickly how this will work. I have amazing fighters here, superheroes with billions. I am fighting them. As you can see, all of this uh, entry data is coming from my, um, my database. So I will show you click quickly here that this data is being populated here and it's at the end working. So as a developer, the only thing I need to be worried is really just adding that uh, variable with uh, connecting with a secret. That's it. So I am connected my application that is running on OpenShift with my Atlas that is running on the cloud. Um, then I will, I know we are almost done. So uh, Ed, do you want to go over the key? Yeah, we, we, we've got the, the slides here. We're, we're pretty much up on time. I posted the link for where folks can get started with the developer sandbox. If you have questions like Valentina and I, uh, like our, our contact info are in here. We've got a bunch of key resources. So we'll make sure you, you get the slides and you can go through and start doing this yourselves. And thanks so much for, for joining us. Thank you. Oh, Benga, if you're talking, you're muted too. Sorry about that. So thanks, Valentin and Ed. That was really good and illuminating. Uh, thanks for showing us the next steps. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A right now, but I know some people posted some questions they've been collected. And when we post the, um, the materials, you'll get some answers there. Also, just a reminder, sessions and all the recordings will be uploaded to the YouTube page. And so next up is supersonic model serving using DGL and Quarkus. Uh, thanks for joining, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.